أولم يرى الذين كفروا إن السماوات والأرض كانت رتقا ففتقناهما وجعلنا من الماء كل شيء هي أفلا يؤمنون Are they who don't believe unaware that the skies and the earth were once one single entity which we then parted asunder and that we made out of water every living thing? Will they not then believe? This verse from the Quran is amazing on so many levels. Before we get to its meaning, let's just take a look at something I think is fascinating. It's symmetry. First, this one verse starts with a question and ends with a question. Both questions ask about those who deny the truth of God despite overwhelming evidence for God. Questions don't condemn people, but rather leave open room for them to come to their senses. It's a mercy. Secondly, what does the Quran say in between the two questions? In seven words, it accurately describes the beginning of creation of the universe from a single entity that rapidly expanded and follows up with seven words that accurately describes the completion of the creation with the formation of life from water. So seven words for the beginning of creation, and then seven words for the most recent part of creation. Two events that are billions of years apart. Third, the main words of this verse are in the order of the chronology of creation, the skies, then the earth, then water, then life. And fourth, the words Ratkan and Fafataknahuma are exact opposites of each other. SubhanAllah, Ratkan is a noun, meaning a single entity, and can be interpreted to represent what scientists call the singularity. And Fafataknahuma is a verb, meaning, and we split them asunder. As mentioned in a previous episode, Arabic words are derived from three-letter root words called triliteral roots. The root words of these two words are Ratakaf and Fatakaf, Rataka and Fataka. These, these words not only rhyme, but they are exact the opposite in meaning. Again, more symmetry. Rataka means he sewed or stitched. And Fataka means to unravel the stitching and thus let the item burst apart. These two words are not uncommon in Arabic, yet they are not used in any other form anywhere else in the Quran, symbolizing that the event it describes is a one-time unique or singular occurrence. In the context of the Big Bang Theory, a singularity refers to a point in the very early universe where density and temperature become infinitely high, and the laws of physics as we currently understand them break down. And it is at this point from which the universe began its expansion 13.77 billion years ago. Double SubhanAllah. To understand the significance of this imagery, of threading and unthreading, let's look at what we know from science. Evidence for the Big Bang Theory comes from various scientific observations, including a faint glow of radiation that fills the universe, called the cosmic microwave background radiation, which is a remnant of our hot, dense past. Also, there is a redshift in the spectrum of light coming from distant galaxies. This is important because of something called the Doppler effect, which tells us that if an object that emits waves is moving away from us, the frequency of the waves that we observe is reduced. The Doppler effect tells us that this redshift means that the objects are moving away from us and that the universe is expanding. The singularity is a result of our current understanding of physics, particularly general relativity, which describes gravitational force. The other three forces we observe in nature, weak, strong, and electromagnetic forces, are related to what happens at the atomic and subatomic levels. A major problem for physicists is that general relativity does not account for what happens with matter and energy at the atomic and subatomic scales, quantum effects. At small scales, such as the singularity, quantum effects would be very significant. Thus, a proper understanding of the singularity would require a theory of quantum gravity, gravity at the atomic scale, which has not yet been fully developed. That is where string theory comes in. One of the ideas of string theory is that, that fundamental particles like electrons, photons, and other particles are not zero-dimensional points, but one-dimensional strings that can be open-ended or closed-loop and vary from each other by their vibrational states. 
To date, string theory has had a positive impact on scientific understanding of black holes, other areas of physics, and on mathematics. But it hasn't been experimentally confirmed because we simply don't have the ability or the equipment to conduct experiments to verify it. And yet, string theory offers a possible resolution to the issue of unifying gravitational forces with the other forces in nature. If string theory is one day verified through experiments, it may explain why God used the words related to threading and unthreading in describing the Big Bang. And if not, well, we'll all just have to wait until we know more about the early universe to unlock the secret of why God used those specific words. Either way, triple subhanAllah. The point of this post is that the Quranic verse, chapter 21, verse 30, is a wonder of poetic symmetry. And in just seven words from the Quran, God describes the Big Bang and the expansion of the universe at the beginning of creation. And in another seven words, God described the origin of life from water and life's dependence on it at the tail end of creation. The three letter root words of the two words in this verse that are used as a metaphor for the Big Bang are rhyming opposites of each other and are related to the threading and unthreading of a sewn object. String theory is a theoretical model that has not been verified but provides an alternative understanding of what happens at the time of the Big Bang and may be why God used the imagery of thread and strings for creation. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share.